All right, excellent. Well, thank you so much. Okay, so you know, first of all, um, setting up a development environment in Docker on your local machine is just a perfect way to run Couchbase. You know, it's pretty, it's 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 very lightweight. Uh, it's portable, right? You can you can be working on code in an airplane, you know, if you want to. So that's kind of what I'm doing here. So so the first step for me um, in in creating this sort of environment where I've got two containers, I've got a, a single node uh, Couchbase server instance running into one Docker container. I've got another container running Sync Gateway. So the first step that I took was to create a virtual network inside of Docker uh, to sort of bridge these two together. So that's what I've done in the first step. You know, then, you know, it's pretty easy to fire up a container running a single node of Couchbase. That's the next step. Um, you can then go into the console and set everything up just as you would normally do. Um, but what I've done is, uh, skipped ahead here a little bit. Uh, what I've done is, um, I've set up a, uh, you know, I've run some, some curl commands basically to set this thing up for me. <clears throat> so this, this is really quick and it's a great way to do, uh, you know, quick deployment. So first thing, setting up the services that I wanted to run in this environment, you know, at the, at the heart of Couchbase is the key value. So that's got to be running at least on one of the nodes. Um, I've also added index query, which is required by the, the Couchbase uh, sync gateway. Uh, and then I also added a, a full text search, uh, which I'm not using. I'm um, creating memory quotas, things like that, creating a bucket for this to, to run in. The next step is sync gateway requires a user on the Couchbase server to connect to. So in this case, I'm creating a user called sync gateway. You can kind of see it over here. Um, this is the name of the user that you're creating. And then of course it has to have um, access to a bucket, which has already been created. So that's on the Couchbase side. The next step is to create a sync gateway container. And I've done that here and I've mapped a local drive um, so that I can connect this uh, sync gateway configuration. And that's what Priya was talking about with that bootstrapping where the next steps beyond that are, are configured using uh, the curl, the, the RESTful APIs. So this is this is as simple as it, as it gets, um, you know, creating a, a bootstrap to the server. So in this case, uh, CV underscore SG is simply the name of the Docker container. Now, because I'm doing this for a demo and I'm using it as a development, I've just gone ahead and skipped the whole certificate process and, and encryption. Obviously you don't want to do this in production, uh, very, very bad. Uh, and then the next step, lastly, is to, um, this is the sync gateway user that I created on the Couchbase server, along with, you know, the super secret password uh, that you see there. Once that sync gateway container is up and running, uh, then you need to add the sync gateway database, and that's that demo bucket there again. Um, <clears throat> interesting here, this, this, this encrypted password here, what this is, is simply a base 64 encoding of the username and password um, that is, uh, you know, to connect to the, to the cluster itself. So that's really um, all there is to setting that up. Super simple. Uh, I've scripted this. It takes about two minutes to create the, the Couchbase server and the Sync Gateway instance. Uh, so let's go ahead and get out of here and we'll move right into the demo. So here I've got a simple application that I've created. Uh, and here is the Couchbase cluster that I put together. So what's going on here is I've just, you know, just to sort of demonstrate how simple this is uh let's go ahead and um, i'm going to create another um, instance here so this is you know on the on the ipad app here we're just replicating everything that you see here in the couchbase uh server environment so if i go ahead and create a user here i'm just or, uh, you know just a, another contact in here i'm going to create a Jackie duck and let's say his email is your this the ball uh, this is just a free form field so it doesn't really matter how bad my spelling is And then we'll just put in one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. When I add a contact, it goes right into the database. And if I hit retrieve over here, you're going to see it immediately show up right in here. So super, super quick. Again, this is running just in a container, a couple of containers on my machine. Uh, I can show in here if I change this backward, I say, uh, well, the phone number is actually 4321 when I hit save. Uh, if you look at that second line over here in the app, it immediately updated right there in the app as well. Now, if I go into Xcode, just so you can sort of see uh, kind of what's going on behind the scenes here, um, I'm just outputting basic information about what's going on in the replication. And I'll show you how, how that's done. But this, this code is so simple. There's one last thing I kind of want to show here. Uh, let me just feed this thing um, a whole bunch of data. Let me hide Xcode real quick. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to dump just a whole bunch of data right here into the database, 500 more records. So almost instantaneously, those things are automatically replicated super, super quickly right back into the app through the sync gateway. 
if I look at Xcode again, you're going to see all of that stuff right out here uh, logged. And then again, too, lastly, I'll go ahead and delete these guys here. Boom. Almost immediately deleted right out of the application. So if you were to write this code yourself, imagine how many lines of code it would take to set up that replication process, to set up the fact that um, this would handle offline capability, right? If internet connectivity is lost, um, but you're still making changes on one side or the other, it's going to pick up those changes. It's going to change, you know, handle the Delta sync. It's going to handle the conflict resolution, all of that stuff. Imagine how many lines of code that would take. Well, it really doesn't take up very much here. You know, as Priya sort of showed in her code samples earlier, um, basically you set up a target uh, to that sync gateway uh, through a port to a bucket. And these things are all sort of stored over here in these um, static values over here. Um, you make an endpoint out of that, and then you set up your replication. Um, and it was mentioned earlier, that replication can be one way, it can be two way. So it can be unidirectional or single directional, or sorry, bi-directional. Um, so if I set that up, I can say it's a push and pull, it's a pull or it's a uh, and again, I'm setting up continuous replication so that any mutation on either side of the fence there is going to immediately trigger this replication. But you can create an on-demand. You can say, I don't want continuous replication. I want some other event in my application to trigger a replication. Um, and that's really about all you have to do. Then you create the replicator object. And then the last step down here is to start the replication. Now, that's, that's all it takes to set up that replication. But probably you're going to want to set up listeners to respond to mutation events. And that's exactly what you saw in the log output over there. So here is a replication listener that anytime there's a mutation, you can trigger a response to that mutation in your code. So super, super flexible, super easy to set up. Again, this is a simple example, but you know, as a developer, you know, you can make some pretty complicated things happen based on certain mutations. So